Welcome to the special edition of the B. Andrews Radio Show. It is so good to have you with us here on Tuesday, June 12th. And uh, it's a wonderful day to be alive. It's a wonderful day to be in central Wisconsin. It's a wonderful day to be in this studio because today this is a special edition of the B. Andrews Radio Show. And I am one of your radio co-hosts today. I am Eric. On the other side of the room is one of the other radio co-hosts. Emily, say hi, Emily. Me is Emily. Yes, you is. Say hi, Emily. There you go. On the other side, behind the controls, wiggling her fingers ever dangerously, trying to make a sound perfected, <laughs> is the other co-host, and that is Kay. Everybody say hi, Kay. Wait, why is everybody saying hi, Kay? They're saying, you You interrupted them. Everybody in wait, Radio wait, wait. Land you was saying... You me say hi. Yes. But like, you let her be quiet so everybody else can tell her hi. Everybody else in Radio Land was telling her hi, but then she had to listen so she could say hi back. Can I say it's an extra, extra special edition because we have somebody else to say hi to? And we have someone else in the studio with us today. We have a VIP. Everybody knows what a VIP is. Very interesting pointer. A very interesting (laughs) pointer. Okay. So we know one thing that he's good at. And yes, it is a he. (laughs) And it is Kyle. So say hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. There you go. And everybody else say hey back. Hey. You're everybody else? <laughs> wow. <laughs> With a single voice you We're were responded to. One voice. <laughs> that uh, is that is that is really no, cool. It is a he because dad did not did, did no longer wish to be. <laughs> wow, where did you go to school? Okay. It is a he because dad no longer wanted to be. Better correction? That's fine. Keep going. I'm, I can't I'm, I'm, think. I never made it past I, the grammar correction. I'm Why trying no? to, like, what are you trying to say, child? No, um, you are no longer outnumbered. Oh, you're you're talking about gender. Gender ratio. Yes, yeah, gender ratio. It is neutral in this room now. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Kyle's still probably just going to agree with us. We, we, we right, said Kyle? gender. Right? right? Gender oh. neutral. Yeah, see? Gender neutral, not hormonal neutral okay so um we are still imbalanced (laughs) there you go all right well it's good to have everybody here on this 12th day of june and we are rocking summer already doing some summer things melting down sweating like a (laughs) sweating like a pig i could say that pigs don't sweat that's the only reason why i can't say that anyway um i did i did i i you know i just said it (laughs) boom there it is okay (laughs) Um, like a sinner at confession time? I hate that <laughs> saying. I hate that saying. Anyway, um, but no, doing some things outside, getting the yard uh, all spick and span, getting that gardening done. We talked about uh, doing some of the gardening stuff. La- what? What? <laughs> what? You know, I can't. I've even, <laughs> I've even stuck you in a corner. <laughs> The and I can't don't work for her. What? It just, I don't do corners. <laughs> Freedom! Uh, for real, you what you're looking like you're trying to bust out with your nose. I mean, what is I like Kyle's doing this, this like weird head bob thing. So I'm making fun of him, but he's not looking at me. So I just keep repeating it. <laughs> yeah, but yours is twice as fast as his. That's the only problem. I have He's, 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 you're going to hit the microphone with your forehead. You keep that up. Okay. So anyway, so anyway, um, we got Kyle with us in studio today, having, having a good time already. Wanted to talk a little bit about what, uh, summer is going to hold for us. But as we do, I, I just noticed we're, we're working on recording this and we've had to wait around for our recording because Emily is, um, well, she's becoming that adult person, and she's got a. This what, sounds like what's a that? really bad what's intro that? into like a like a. I hate to break it to you, but Emily's growing up now. She <laughs> well, so you know. yeah. Well, speak up into your microphone when you say that. Emily's growing this, up no, now. This requires a gentle approach. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Don't scare the let me let me be gentle with you. You're growing up, and you Please have no, no, and away. you have back away, back away. stranger danger. A job. (laughs) I've had a job for like a year and a half. Yes, but now that John is gone, your job has doubled. Not really. I was still taking most of his shifts. 
before he left. Not too far before he left. No, he aborted a lot of them to go to North Carolina to see his babe. Oh. (laughs) And I ended up doing almost all of his shit. Aborted, huh? Okay. Tell us how you really feel. Overboard. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So anyway, um, and she works at the library. Some of you that live in and around our area know that. Uh, Those of you that live out across the country that listen to our radio show probably don't but she is our our local librarian one of how many how many librarians do we have i'm the assistant i work underneath the head that's about it <laughs> you're the neck that's just the you're two the, of us you're the neck <laughs> <So> <laughs> yes she's a... um, but i'm not the neck that turns the head we just kind of float there <laughs> <laughs> okay i okay. well, have to see uh does miss we lisa... are modoc yeah does miss does miss lisa ever listen to this show no, and I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell her about it now. No. Okay, oh. so we'll see. We'll see. What we get done eventually. I want to get posters up about our show and get it, as they say up uh, up north, get it out and about so people can see out, out and about. They say uh, out like you're supposed to say we. And and get people to um, uh, see. I do know. I got a couple. I mentioned this before. A couple of truck driver friends uh, who are. Uh, go across the country, and they told me that they would post uh, some of our posters if we will get them made uh, about the radio show <laughs> in the different uh, truck stops and things like that. Because truck drivers really like having other things to listen to other than other than radio. So that that would be really cool if we can pull some of those guys in. But anyway, so uh, Emily is our our resident librarian. She's here in with us. And I was just wondering, so how did it go today at work? Oh, slow. We had seven people come in. One guy just stopped in to use the Internet. <laughs> and then left. <laughs> well, uh, but you know that is a primary. That's a, that's that's becoming a very primary. Um... Yeah, but this is the sad thing. They're taking a poll. That's this is why I had to count how many people came in, how many people asked questions, how many questions were asked, how many people used the computer, and then how many calls there were, and then how many people in total came in. Because they're taking a poll to see how often the library is used on Saturdays and if it's worth it anymore to keep it open. I believe. They're trying to take take a poll because Miss Lisa said more than once that it's not really, really been worth it to keep it open on Saturdays, but they, they do anyway just so that people have like a drop-off day. Okay. And I mean, usually it's like really, really slow, but people usually come in and out as a drop-off day on Saturday anyway, and I'll usually get like between seven to ten people, but they'll just come in, drop all their stuff off, maybe pick up something new, and then... Well, you should have counted your mom on that, because we drop stuff off, it's just that we give it to you. (laughs) That doesn't count as someone coming in, I can't count myself. Oh, drop, yeah, but but we would have if you weren't already going that direction, Um, so... But you didn't. You didn't come in, so I didn't count it. Our I stuff, can't count it. Our stuff got there. So yeah, but that's the equivalent of putting it in the Dropbox. Oh, so you don't count the drop-offs in the Dropbox. No, we count the people who actually walk in walk to the library. In. Oh, okay. Otherwise, gotcha. the Dropbox can just be still... The Dropbox can be used anytime. Well, you know, the funny thing about y'all's Dropbox, come Monday, is, is I open that thing up and I can't get anything in there. You know, it's it's yes. it's plugged and it's Mondays, full. And... Mondays are the worst to try to do a Dropbox. Usually it's best if you just drop things off Monday. It's better to get it early in before then because once Monday comes, I'm picking up huge stacks of books and movies that, that come. Yeah, I know. In. Sometimes they're actually still stuck in the Dropbox and I kind of have to slide my, and they're a big stack, big tall, and I have to slide my hand in there and knock the stack over. So that I can get mine so in there. So you're the reason why they're always all tumbled and disoriented. <laughs> Should I have admitted that? I'm sure there's other people who do the same thing. Well, well, here's the thing why it bothers me. Some people don't actually click the DVD all the way in. The DVD? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some people don't click the DVD all the oh, way in yes. on the little circular thing. You know when you put them back in the disc, and yes. some people don't. At the same time, don't close the the thing all the way. They're whipping around so fast that they're just putting the disc in and then shutting it. But nothing is being set in place or being closed all the way. So when you do that and you knock it over, you actually I've had to clean up discs that have been knocked out of cases. Very. Well, that may not have been you because other people probably do it too to fit their stuff in or it may a book, a singular book may drop in and knock other things over. But I'm more mad about the people who don't actually do that. And like you go to 
crack open a case and it's and the disc goes flying out of the DVD case and you're like get back here like uh, and runaways are are awful so so here's what i want to know are you that lovable librarian that everybody likes or are you that mean nasty librarian that people are like ooh oh she's in there i don't want to go in there uh. uh well the old people like me <laughs> like all the old people like me a lot of older people will come in and talk my ears off well yeah and, th- okay. and that's fine okay the kids the kids i usually send home early in the winter because it gets really cold and they live like four blocks up the street yeah so i do that to make them safe and then i make sure there's like sometimes they'll drop their stuff in the hallway and that's not good or they'll be messing around and tearing stuff up and they'll tell them to stop. Usually when they cross the line, I'll tell them to stop. Oh. So the kids. So you're that librarian. The kids. Me, 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 me. The kids don't me, really me, like me, me because I make sure they hang up their stuff like they're supposed to. Me, me, they don't tear anything up in their library like me, they're, you know, me. supposed to. I mean, they, they come to the library so that they have somewhere to hang out where, me, me, where they can do what they want. Which I have no problem with so long as they're not bothering anything. <laughs> okay, you tell a seven-year-old why he can't stick a chocolate bar inside a book. Absolutely not. Because <laughs> it's not your job. Not my job. <laughs> Go for it's it. It's my job to take care of the library while I'm there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're that librarian. Okay, I totally get it. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kyle's over there, and I, he's got something to say. Quiet my library. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say it like that. <laughs> Here, can I just borrow your voice for a day? Yeah, I'm no. good. No. Right, and you're that librarian. Is that what you run around? Shh. Shh. Only when they start Shh. yelling and all the older people come in trying to read. That's right. I have some people that'll come into the, 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 the thing to do work. They'll go through the archives. They'll come in with their books and read. Or they'll shift through some things and trying to help the library. And then when other people are in the library, I'll tell the kids to need to quiet down. But they're yelling at each other across the way and having arguments. That's the only time I ever tell them to be quiet. Hey, I found a book that begins with D, Darby's Child, over in the C section. Ha 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 ha. Wonder no, how they're got the there. ones putting the D book in the C section. I have to rearrange the children's DVDs a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. So <laughs> anyway, and by the way, I mean, do you go around with a finger to the lips doing the shh or, or are you the psst? You know, putting the two fingers. Yeah, pssst. That's demeaning, I think. I do the shh as a reminder. Oh, you're a shusher. Okay. I'm a shusher. I'm not a pster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe different age groups because different age groups understand it differently. You know, the older people, shh, they get that. The younger people, pssst. You don't have to tell the old people to be quiet. They like the library and it's quiet. <laughs> And I don't tell them to shush. Shut up. I don't tell them to shush a lot. It's only when other people are coming in and they're trying to get stuff done that I tell them that they need to be quiet. Like if they're gonna talk, they can't be yelling. If they're gonna say something, they can't be you know really really loud. Other than that, I don't say you know don't talk or don't you know because you know that's totally understandable. You just I just don't want them being like really really loud. All right. Well, that's a good place to take a librarian break <laughs> right there. Going to we're going to slip story. out into the hallway and get ourselves a drink. Today we're doing cold stuff because it's a little warm here in the uh, in the studio. So for those of you that are listening, this will be a good place to go capture yourself something to drink. You like I said that? Capture yourself something to drink. That's <laughs> we gotta right. Go hunt down our sodas. Now? You got to go hunt it down, kill it before it gets away. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's a mean drink right there, I'll tell you. Ooh, yeah, so, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm going to regret that tomorrow. No, no. That. Anyway, we're going to do that, and then we'll be right back to do more of the B. Andrews Radio Show. Hey, Emily, want to see me pull an armadillo out of my shoe? Oh, not this trick again. Nothing up my pant leg. Whoosh. Presto! Un gran gato negro in mes pantalones. Welcome back to the B. Andrews Radio Show. Welcome back to the second segment of the B. Andrews Radio Show. And uh, we were talking about libraries in the uh, first portion of our show. No, you and didn't. You grilled the local librarian. I, uh, you didn't talk about the library. You talked about the librarian. Yes, and I'm telling you, she was pretty good. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, tasty. <laughs> tasty. Way to go. Divide. <laughs> I'm not going there. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'm going so, sugar. Sugar crush. Uh-huh. Candy, yeah. Candy, tasty. Candy, candy, candy. Yes. I can't get candy crush. That's what it's called. But that's not how this works. That's not how, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, so I, I grilled out on the... Uh, on the on the local librarian, and uh, we found out that she's a shusher. So burned, it burned real bad. <laughs> I would, I don't like my librarians burned. Okay, That's, well, you did. You held me over the fire too long. Ah, oh, wow. I like the references though. This is working really well. Have we forgotten that being Irish and Scottish, I do not brown. I burst into flames. <laughs> okay, and I'm uh, so I'm I'm marshmallow white. Get, Tell, get this now. Yeah, that's why I burst into flames. Is that that is that is that why my photo grays are going off over here? Yes. Okay. So anyway, um, uh, now you two, I just wonder, do you have any librarial stories that uh, you would like to share? You know, maybe there was that one mean librarian that uh, kept shushing you all day or you know this is an incident that happened in the library anything like that I wanted to get you guys in on the conversation well the only thing that's ever happened to me in a library that I will also regret is apparently being a girlfriend to a three-year-old <laughs> okay you robber. got some explaining to do on that you cradle no. robber you, no. for real you are made me explain this in a couple oh, episodes yes. ago oh did i really previous, previous episode as yes. you as you could tell in one ear and out the other what was i doing when this was going on <laughs> yeah thank you Karen H- hunting father. down the little boy <laughs> oh well that I threatening do, him i could do that <laughs> that's what i should he lives do. in the house down the street with the giant star on the side of it oh that one it is done okay anyway <laughs> so <laughs> okay so I don't go. To- oh, wait a minute, everybody! This is Kyle speaking. Yeah, in <laughs> case you couldn't tell. Okay, so I don't go to libraries very much anymore, and it's I, I well, I guess at one point in in my library going years when I actually <laughs> he almost had a library <laughs> career there. Did you hear that? <laughs> my <laughs> library so going old. career. So old. You could have okay. just, you did not have to explain like the volume at which you attended libraries. You could have been just like, you know, this one time. <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay. So oh, no. was in my library career. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So I used to go to the library quite a bit cause I'd read books all the time and it's still now he's become a I, I read introvert. books less now compared to when I especially since they put them on audio all they have to do is listen <laughs> but um so there was this one time where I had a book and I didn't return it like right away so I had fees stacking up because it was it was overdue and I honestly just forgot about it so I went to the library one day and they told me I couldn't do anything there because my book was overdue so they cut me off on the computers and everything I couldn't use any of the resources there Yes, and the limit is five dollars, which means if you don't return something for like up to four days, you'll get a five dollar fee on it, and it cuts you off <gasps> of everything. You can't even use your card. You have to immediately return whatever you've done and then pay the fine. Our library doesn't do that. We still allow people to use their cards, but you are no longer allowed to put in orders for things online. Um. Okay. So, like, okay, now after that happened. I, I turned in the book and paid the fees and everything, but like for two years after that, I didn't go to the library at all. I'd have other people do it for me. So that <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to go and like look th- at the librarian and be like, I was the guy who had the overdue book for like ever and you cut me off. And that was a psychological thing. And now at this point, it's just like, he hits yeah, a wall. it's better just to have somebody else do it. And then I don't have to worry about certain things. I, I, and then, <laughs> okay, I, I'm, 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 let me interject something here. Okay. Cause I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm short circuiting. Somebody give me, give me a little frying brain sound that can you. Yeah, thank thank you. Okay, it's it's, it's I'm a, why do you have to explain to them that you're that guy? You just go <laughs> he's, back. He's that, that guy. guy. Okay, you just go in after it's paid. You just go in, lay down your library card. We don't talk about it. I'm sorry. Now, now, I'm sorry, I don't had, talk if about you had this. Come in to get get something, and then she looked at you like you were 
that, that guy. guy. I would understand <laughs> that. But that ex- also explains why, like, two months ago, I got this random text from Kyle. Like, the first time Kyle ever texted me. Hey, could you put in an order for two different books for me <laughs> under my name? I had to go in, find him, which was difficult because your library card expired, re-up his library card, <laughs> then, then get, I don't go to library. ask no. him for his phone number. <laughs> then I found his books and was able to put them under his name. Gotcha. But, I, but he's like, hey, could you have those delivered to Hancock? I'm like, fine. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out why you feel like, you know, you have to explain, hi, I was the dude that, that no, you just <laughs> well, lay like, down your card, you, <laughs> you don't, don't say a me. word, you don't make eye contact, that's important. Well, okay? I would explain it, I just have this irrational fear that every time I'd walk in, they'd recognize me as that guy. <laughs> yeah, they have your picture up on every bulletin in libraries now. <laughs> it's right behind their head, you know. So don't be like that, that guy. guy, okay? Or they're sitting there checking out your book and they swivel around and look <laughs> at your the, picture. Look at, they're trying to up identify the you in, the, in like the in like the library offenders. Catalog. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I need some more ID, please. <laughs> <laughs> I got to return the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I mean it's just it's just one of those things, man. It just you know, they don't care. You paid the fine. Let's move on. You know, nobody nobody And don't does. do it again. It's those people who like oh. don't return the books and like try to get off their fines like, "Oh, I did return it. Well, here it says it was never checked into the system. We check everything that comes into the system." Well, I did return it. Or the people who return it and then, like, the movie isn't in it. We have one of them down at the library now. You check them in and you go to check them in. But the thing is, is you can't check off that it's there because the actual item isn't there. We only have the case. Wow. So it's like you have to remember, okay, who had it last? Write the name down. Stick a note on it. And the next time you see the person, hey, you still have this DVD floating around in your house somewhere? We need it back. (laughs) That is that is that is wild. Well, anyway, really quick, we're gonna we're gonna move along here because I'm being told that uh, time is running short on this particular segment. <laughs> Where are we at on time? Uh, specifically, I'm not going to tell you, so keep talking. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you where we're at. Short. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I I'm I'm thinking about Who's all the troubles <laughs> and everything that you go through. But I'm also thinking of the size of the library where we are. Um, And so I looked this up really quick. The top five largest libraries in the United States. Not the world, just the United States. Oh, they can be pretty stinking ridiculous. And you know Library of Congress has got to be on there. Uh, Well, I know for a fact Library of Congress is the number one uh, largest library in the United States. I don't know where it is in the world, but I do know it's the largest one in the United States. They have one. I want to say Portugal, Spain, somewhere over there in like. And um, somewhere over there in Europe, they, stop making fun of me. Stop making fun of me. They have, stop it. They have a library over in Europe. It's a theater that somebody renovated and turned all of like the opera, like the, all the uh, box seats. It's like it was an old opera theater, uh, opera house, and they turned all the box seats into like bookshelves and stuff. So you can roam the entire theater and then you can sit in the theater seat, like where the theater seats were. They have a few still in, but most of them have all, have all been turned around and turned into like tables and chairs and stuff. And there's a cafe downstairs. So the whole the- like, and you can even like, they even have like places where um, theater enthusiasts can still come back and like pick up original screenplays and stuff and, and still act on the stage and, and stuff as a theater. But you know, it's biggest, you know, profit is is it's a library so is that theater uh is the primary materials that it covers all theatrical materials i don't know i don't know it was uh it was a passing page and everybody was like oh this library is so cool and someone's like i know exactly where that is i can go to that library it's in my country which is why i can only cite like that it was over in the uk because i think it was like a is that the dog i have no the, I think she's sleep dreaming. The, our yeah. dog is snoring underneath the <laughs> underneath recording the table. recording table. So if you hear that rumbling, it's actually the dog snoring. Anyway, the reason why I brought that up is I have the top five largest um, libraries in the United States of America, and I wanted to tell you their volumes. I don't know if you have a clue. I know 
how many volumes you guys house here at the Hancock Library. Well, but, it's um, ever increasing, so we don't really have it. Either. And you're members of a library consortium, which means the other library, you guys share resources back and forth. So Please, their, yeah. their volumes are your volumes, and, and that which magnifies you greatly. Anyway, no, actually, no, we don't share property. We only do... Um, we only do like library loan because we all that, that's share a sharing. the same system. Yeah, but we don't share. We like we like loan product, but we don't share ownership of it. I'm not saying the loaning is what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that gives other people access to other things that are right. in the library. We go as far away as we have. We have library go to Green Lake, Poissippi, um, all the way out to Berlin. <laughs> oh, she's loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dog, you need to clean out your sinuses. <laughs> okay. Really, never mind. That's technically our job. No, I am not cleaning that dog's sinuses. <laughs> okay, so, so here you go. <laughs> okay, stop right there. So here you go. No, now, most of these. Snog sutters. Okay, there. I got it out. Most of these libraries are connected with a major university. Okay. Oh, yeah. So number five is Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, Five mil, fifteen million two hundred thousand volumes. That's a very different number. <laughs> yes, fifteen million two hundred thousand volumes. Number four, New York Public Library, the city of New York. Huh. Now, between Yale being in Connecticut, New York, I mean, you realize how much early American history is. They in would this, cover a lot in this area, and they would have. Uh, some original, old, yeah, original manuscripts. Some pretty old yeah, books. pretty, pretty much. Okay, so that's and New they York have City. A lot of first edits, anyway, just because of being some of the first libraries. Sure, sixteen million three hundred and forty-two thousand. By the way, the first publishing houses are also in New, New York, York City. Yeah, uh, at number I mean, there's three, one just called New York Publishing House. Correct. Okay, number three, Harvard University Library, again, Cambridge, Massachusetts. So you're in Connecticut, New York City, Massachusetts, um, all right there in that area. 16,832,000 volumes. Wow, they only beat out New York by so many thousands. Five, uh, by 500,000. Yeah. Boston Public Library, Boston, Massachusetts. Again, look how old, and Boston had its own publishing house, original. Uh, nineteen million and ninety thousand. Oh, and this is for wow. counting. So who knows how relevant this information is? Um, because they'll do, get do, 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 new do. authors' books all the sure, time. Sure, sure. I don't have how I don't have how recent this is. And number one in the United States for uh, Congress or <laughs> for libraries is I gave it away. Yeah, the Library of Library Congress. of Congress. Now the next one closest to is nineteen million. Library of Congress, 34,528,000 Wow, blown out of the water. And you want to know something cool? All the way up here in Wisconsin, if the Library of Congress had a book that someone up here wanted, so long as they jumped through the appropriate hoops, we could get a, we could get a book or a thing of, Files even of information shipped all the way up here. Usually it's like genealogies or legal documents. But so long as they get, you know, okayed as an American citizen and, you know, get you know, the right, you know, green lights. We can have stuff from the Library of Congress shipped all the way up here. One of the cool things, Library of Congress, if you ever get a chance to go to Washington, D.C. and see the Library of Congress, beautiful building. It, it Through artwork that's in the opening and in the foyer section of the building, which, by the way, is huge. Uh, the artwork is there to show what knowledge is based upon. And so it starts at the bottom and it works itself all the way up through artwork to show you uh, what the hierarchy of knowledge is, is based on. So go there. You ought to check that out. You need a photo ID. To but get in, <laughs> the incredible thing, that's to get in. To get into that section, you don't. But to actually go in and get a book, you have to have a photo ID, and the cart system that is still in the Library of Congress was designed by and built by 
Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> and it is still in existence today. It's and in, it's still working. You know, they don't make things like they used to. And it's in <laughs> it's in a section that's called the Great Room. The Great Room is absolutely beautiful. It he is needs to work on his name. It is it is though. really incredible to go see. Okay, so people thought almost twenty million was really big, but over thirty four million, completely blown out of the water. And to think, just put in perspective, you need an absolutely massive building just to house all of that. Yes. <laughs> Do you know how many buildings the Library of Congress actually has? No, how not many? Not just one. There are three. Oh, I was <laughs> three or four. Yes, there okay. are actually three buildings for the Library of Congress. So that's what we're talking about today. Maybe you need to run down to the library and get you a uh, a book get Ours you an, get you an audio <laughs> book um which is something that we like to do when we go on the road and we take an audio book with us or maybe you just need to get you a movie to rent for tonight however you can always do that at your public library and uh, another great place to take a break so you do that come on back to recap our story our pudgy pals were summoned to the grand ballroom of the Gotham waldorf hotel astoria where the quintessential queen of Quindahar was celebrating her royal birthday. That's when our fiendish fiend did his dastardly deed and iced the queen in the face. Figuring out the clues that led them to the abandoned Godham Donut Factory, our dumpy duo stumbled into a trap set by none other than Cake Face. (laughs) Crumpling, crueler fat man! How are we going to get out of here? I have an idea, Bobbin. If I could just reach my utensil belt. Meanwhile, on the roof of the abandoned Gotham Donut Factory, Cake Face is trying to make his getaway by helicopter. Hurry up, pirate. Can't you make this thing take off? Sorry, sir. It seems we have too much weight on board. Too much weight? But it's just me. Moving at the speed of osmosis, Fat Man and Bobbin burst onto the roof. Fat Man! But how did he... The most primal of methods. I ate my way out. And I got to clean off the spoon! Suddenly, the helicopter began to lift off from the roof. Whirling whirlybird, Fat Man! Cake Face is getting away! Quick, Bobbin... Hand me that spoon. With great precision, Batman throws the spoon into the cabin of the helicopter, hitting the big red button marked off, thereby shutting off the helicopter engine. Faster than you can say, beautiful billowing rubber, Batman takes his handy roll of saran wrap and wraps up Cake Face, and thereby wrapping up the cake. Later... At the GCPD, Fat Man meets with Commissioner Gordy. Wow, Fat Man. You caught the cardamom carrying cake face. However did you do it? Well, Commissioner Gordy, I don't reveal all my secrets, but I can assure you it was a piece of cake. Thank you for tuning in to the adventures of Fat Man and Bobbin. Join us on the next adventure when we'll hear Bobbin say... Barfing bacteria, Fat Man. I don't feel so good after eating all that cake batter. Don't you know, Bobbin? Evil doesn't wash. Welcome to the third segment of the B. Andrews Radio Show in studio with Emily K., Eric, and Kyle. (laughs) Don't forget, Kyle. Lean into the mic, Kyle. Don't laugh from afar. I'm laughing near now. (laughs) (laughs) And speak up when you talk. All right. So um, anyway, one of the things that we're that we're working on and I have had this crew, I've had you guys together now for a couple of years. We've been working on um, our backyard Bible camp. Oh, I'm like, wait, we've only been working a couple of weeks. What? Why have we been doing this a couple of couple years? Weeks. A couple of years. Same yeah. Day. I mean, you know, what's a little time among friends? Who? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> among friends. <laughs> So um, I'm thinking uh, Backyard Bible Camp. That's uh, We've got that coming up. It's going to be uh, July 23rd through the 27th. We run ours in the evening, uh, 6 p.m., and uh, it goes to 8, I believe. Yeah, 6 to 8 at the Hancock Wesleyan Church here in Hancock. So uh, it's for grades 1 through 6. So if you got some kids, uh, bring them on down. 
going into the first grade, coming out of the sixth grade. So um, that's the that's basically the age group that we'll be working with, and uh, it's a lot of fun, I think, working with the kids. Um, what do, what do you guys think? You got some some stories now. I mean, three years you've been racking racking up some experience with doing this backyard Bible camp. I now know. Did how you to do just you just <laughs> snorted like the dog? I mean, you sounded like the dog snoring on the no, floor sn- right there. I sn- I snorted. You snorted. I know I what you did. Sounded like you when you sneezed. Uh, sneeze? Yeah. I sneeze like that. Yeah. You 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 you're making things sneeze up now. Sneeze on Mike. He's on command. <laughs> I go. <can't, laughs> I can't do that. Sorry. Anyway, you started saying. You I forgot what you were going to say. You, I can, you were talking over top of me. You were snorting on the mic. I technically had my hand up first. So, mm. Mm. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. So being on staff, backyard Bible camp, what have you learned? I personally do not work with the kids. I work technical stuff. Uh, like Emily learned that she can't work with kids. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, no. What I learned is, um, like Emily said, shadow puppets. Um, there was a cast of all girls, and there was only actually one girl as as, That's as the, the shadow dude puppets. Wrote the script. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were all the shadow puppets. And right. All of them except the alligator were guys, and all of them were played Which by girls. Which one had bad vision? The uh, that was me. The that jaguar. Me. The ja- we, the jaguar. We were actually able to put an actual pair of glasses on the jaguar. We puppet. had to keep taping them. They kept falling off, which was the point. But I know. learned that my artistic skills stretched beyond pencil and paper. I made the puppets. I made the scenery. I made the stage. I made the arts and crafts. Well, hey, you know when you're just sketching shadows. I <laughs> okay. First of all, I had to go find oh, appropriate first of images. All. First then of I all. had to be able to put them up on the wall. And then I had to freehand most of them, actually. I could only do the basic outlines. Then I had to figure out how to make a move. Then I had to stick them on paint sticks. Are you going to tell me? You're not going to give me credit for anything, are you? Well, what did you do? She, he stand up the chin. Oh, my gosh, Emily. How do I make it move, Dad? Oh, that's easy. You put a pivot point in it right here, and the arm will move. I didn't ask you that. Yeah. Oh. Yes, you no, I certainly didn't. did. No, I didn't. I said, I don't want to make them move because that's stupid. They're shadow puppets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I told you. Oh, ben. no. His arms should not have to move. No, 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 no. They're shadow puppets, not actual puppets. <laughs> shadow <laughs> puppets move. Yeah, when you move them. First of all, well, we didn't it's have, a puppet. We didn't have more than one free hand. That was definitely one know, appendage. That just came on the animal from the Department of Redundancy. It doesn't move. It's a shadow puppet. Do, 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 do. Yeah, when you make a puppet move, it moves. Yes, I mean, that's how it works. works. We didn't have more than one free hand. We were on our knees trying to hide behind a thing. We didn't have more than just one free hand to move those stupid hey. puppets. I gave you boxes to hide behind. Exactly. Dad made the stage. You didn't. I'm bigger than two banana boxes. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am taller. I am two- so glad <laughs> you admitted that on radio. <laughs> I am taller than two banana boxes. I, I am bigger than two banana boxes. Okay. So. Unit of measurement. How tall are you? Uh, about four banana boxes. <laughs> I am four banana boxes long, two banana boxes high. Except actually, you're automatically. Actually, I'm on like your knees. four and a half. If you send me Air, Air Express, <laughs> <laughs> if you send me Air Express, I would get there faster. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> this, has, this has really broken down. <laughs> it has. But we're talking about backyard Bible camp. Oh, is that so what we were saying? experiences. So you've learned about shadow puppets. Is I that is that experience. all? You are an experience? <laughs> I heard that. Any any anyone That's else? That's what mom says. <laughs> yes. Yes. All the way from birth, you have been an experience. Um <laughs> Besides working with shadow puppets, which divulged into something um, totally unbelievable, we um, behind the scenes what we did is we ran around, made sure the tables were set up, and besides thank you, thank you for all the people who actually worked with the kids, giving us a break to just like let us bring <laughs> well, in the we chairs, the take down crew. the tables. Oi, thank you for all the people that work with the kids, so I didn't have to. 
Uh-huh. 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 They're yeah. who you're working for. The They're thing. who you're working for. And they had the energy to work with the kids because they weren't the ones that were setting it up and taking it down all throughout, like before, through, and after the thing. They were the ones brought in to work with the kids, whereas we did the stories, did the background, did, and a lot of the legwork. So we didn't have energy to do both that and work with the kids and make a good impression with the kids. Yeah, well, there, there really is a lot of preliminary work when you don't buy a go out and just buy a program when you, you actually write it and uh, do all that stuff yourself. That, that really is a lot of preliminary work and then you do the stage and then you do all the crafts we did that too we develop our yeah, own crafts we looked up different arts and crafts and we're like well we could have the kids make these well how would we do that well this is how i would build it we right. have to build it right. and then give the kids the rest there's of the only food. one craft that i purchased uh we, we went ahead and, and purchased it and that's the picture craft but still yeah, the we night buy the picture frames. but the night that we do the pictures is still a crazy night because we line up all the kids. Oh. We get the pictures, take them, take it back to my office, get the photos done, Can't cut we them. Do that the day before. That's usually how we do them. Like they do the picture frame the day before, and then we take their pictures, and then we have the rest that day, and then we hand them to them the next day after they're done drawing. Yes, but we have to get everybody's picture in that night before they leave. And really, all that just to tell me that I've been trying to tell you. I have minute. seen it out of the corner of my eye. You, you can't see this in Radio Land. There's she's trying there's, to land an airplane there's our, again. There's our director, <laughs> and no, she's over there, right now. and she's over there flashing me this handful of digits. <laughs> I'm glad you finished that. She's sentence. flashing me this handful of digits, trying to tell me how much time is going on. I see that. Then how about you acknowledge me and save this from what all happening? What do I need to acknowledge? There's more than one digit up. That's cool. I got time. Hey, look, Karen has a hand. Yep. <laughs> Hi. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Why did they need fingers to give them the old razzle dazzle? Of course. So, Kyle, you haven't spoken up yet. Do you have any any story to add to this? I think any... you were going to say like wisdom and like, nope, you... not the right word. <laughs> 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 She just said you don't have any wisdom. I'm just letting you know, man. Well, I I did the whole like video thing for two years, so I was like one of the people who kind of dressed yeah, up and that, that kind of stuff. He I, was my main character. He was Yeah, I was Sir Gutenacht, which was one of the knights that we used for the one theme that we had the year that year, and um, it was fun to go walk around in a woman's blouse and have a sword. <laughs> sword <laughs> yes. Hand. Yeah, it was my blouse. Because we, yeah. we, we know that knights back then were not manly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any chain mail. I mean, he had a sword. He had an awesome sword. We even did a total awesome, like, f- photographed, like, sword fight. But I did not have, like, any proper costumes. So when we dressed him up, I wanted him to wear, like, one of those, like, old flowy like shirts or, or sarks that they wore those back were then. actually undergarment shirts well you know what not it, in it, hollywood they <laughs> <laughs> good point good thank one. you for saying yeah, nice yeah. nice comeback way to go man anyway i go. wanted it to at least look somewhat the problem was is even in black and white you could tell that his hair just wasn't just one color yeah, it was purple. Then. <laughs> it was yeah, my, purple. Pur- my hair was purple then. You were doing, oh, you were okay. You're doing the clown thing. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to lead you there, man. I guess I couldn't help it. Anyway, so backyard Bible camps coming up. I also, oh, I just remembered. Um, I also really enjoyed putting ice cream on Danny's face the year before that. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Okay, you got to jog my memory. I'm I'm so, so missing the, something it, here. I believe it was the Western one that we did, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I remember and, that now. And like me and Danny were like the main characters, mm-hmm. and like I was being mean to him. So like when he went to go like lick his ice cream, I shoved it in his face. Uh huh. And did you do it a little too hard. Did he have like ice cream up his nose? Yeah, he was yeah, smelling it for bit, the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So we've talked about Danny a lot here, a uh, good friend of ours, and uh, has Danny helped us. Yeah, he's he's um, and Danny's got ice cream up his nose. Yeah, that'd be him, right? Right. Right. Okay. I hope he's still there. 
Ooh, <laughs> that would be seriously crusty. Anyway, moving right <laughs> yes, along. <laughs> he's a curd, comes flying out. <laughs> oh. hmm. I'm pure Wisconsin. I snort cheese. <laughs> I snot cheese. Yeah. I don't know about snorting. <laughs> you went the wrong direction with the cheese. <laughs> How'd you get that big ball up there? Anyway, anyway, so um. Yeah, but that'd be funny. Like, go to I, the mean, cheese I mean, I mean, I'm just yeah, I'm go getting to the these cheese factory. And like, well, yeah, I'm getting these mental images of. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're trying to talk about children's ministry. Oh, got it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I like how we're trying to talk about children's ministry. No, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we can turn this into a children's game. Here you go, little Johnny. Snort the cheese ball. That's how, many, how many can you get up there? How many can you get up there? You know, the you know, you know, a kid did that one time with, like, crayon, but he got, like, the half crayon stuck up his nose, but it was a hot day, so by the time he ended up running up to me, he's like, look, look, and he had, like, jungle green running down his lips. I was like... Uh. Okay, kid. <laughs> right. Red, right. Right. I have a story about <laughs> that, but let's take a break, and I'll come back, and I will tell you that story. And uh, thanks for listening to the B. Andrews Radio Show. Go get you something to drink, and come on back for our fourth and final segment. Listening to the HBC, the Hambone Broadcasting Corporation. Welcome back to the fourth and final segment of the special edition of the B. Andrews Radio Show. We're working towards our Backyard Bible Camp, which is going to be at the Hancock Wesleyan Church, July 23rd through the 27th. Immediately following on July 28th will be our community picnic, by the way, uh, adults and kids. What noises are you making over there? It's the grunting kind. <laughs> Major Bacon, what is going on? Starting out my back, monsieur. <laughs> is that, you, do you have to make those noises when you stretch your back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously. All right. Oh, well, but it wouldn't pop. <laughs> pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so. um. <laughs> Uh huh. Gotcha. And it just, it just, it just, it took it its like, stiffness and it transferred it to your back. It's not like <laughs> in that huge comfy chair that John took. It's his. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, John took the comfy chair out of the uh, studio and now I'm that he is in gone. A hard back dining room chair. But it was his chair. Uh, well, at least now we have more room for more people. Yes. That chair is freaking huge. For more guests so that we can heat this room up even more. No, that's all the Yay. dog's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Kyle. We found him. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, in our fourth and final segment, just some things. Hey, we want to encourage you, if there is a vacation Bible school going on somewhere near where you are, um, why don't you encourage the children of your neighborhood, the kids of your town, to go <laughs> to the vacation Bible school? Here's a little statistic that we came up with. Um, <laughs> you came up with the statistic. Yeah, well, Kyle did. He, he did wow, that. what an it imagination. We had actual numbers. We just had to get the specific numbers by doing a little bit of math. And by we, I mean Kyle. Kyle, that's right. None of us did it. He I did. wouldn't do math if you put a gun to my head. He's the person with the math late shirt on, so. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes. Two, Wait a minute. four, six, eight. We know how to calculate. You. Pi, circumference, square root. So tell me, tell me something, Major Bacon. I asked you and put a gun up to your head and said, you're going to do math. How many barrels am I holding at you? You wouldn't add them up just to save your life? <laughs> no, I'd shoot you back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Anyway, what you're forgetting is nobody defeats the big on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a challenge. I don't want to defeat it. I want to eat it. <laughs> so anyway, um, death any eat. death eat. 
So anyway, prepare over there for our good news story, because as soon as we get done with this, we're going to go directly to you for good news. All right. So here's our little statistic that we found out. There are approximately 400 to 500 children in the state of Wisconsin that attend a vacation Bible school a year. Um, so that means out of the 1,292,000 children that are in, and when I say children, I'm saying minors, 18 years and younger that, uh, live in the state of Wisconsin. Um, that means that only three hundredths of 1% of the children in Wisconsin attend a vacation Bible school. So, um, you know, they're really great. It's a great place to connect with children. It's a great place to teach kids about God, about Jesus Christ. It is a way of uh, getting out there and uh, possibly even getting children to get into a church and, and maybe even connecting with mom and dad and helping mom and dad get into a church. So, you know what? Vacation Bible schools are out there. It's a great time for kids. It's like a little Bible camp in the middle of the week. If you got kids in your neighborhood, invite them, challenge them, encourage them to go to your local vacation Bible school. Or Five Day Club. That's another name for a VBS-esque <laughs> type of thing. Some people will go around and do what's called a Five Day Club. And it's it's similar. I mean, VBSs can run for an entire week and are usually held inside a church. But Five Day Club um, will can set up tents and stuff or just curtains and things for outside. And... I personally did more five-day club than I've ever done VBS. I think we went to VBS, like, what, once? Well, uh, like actually, an actual I've, VBS? I've been to two actual VBSs, but I've been to, like, what, a couple couple of uh, five-day clubs that they've actually come to our town. I loved it. I love walking out every day and uh, meeting them in, in a random yard, <laughs> technically, but... All right, so, and now... And I promised that I would do this little story that you told. And so before we go into break, so we're getting ready for good news. So we were, um, I was with a, a group. Um, well, I wasn't actually with that particular group at the time. Somebody was told me the story that it was a, a Bible college choir and they're sitting outside. They, they, they go in, they sing a first half. They come out of the church sanctuary in the second half. They close the sanctuary doors. And there's usually in the sanctuary doors that go into a church, there's usually glass windows so that you can look through the door to see what's going on in the main sanctuary. And they're standing outside of there. And one of the guys is happens to be in the front of row getting ready to go in because you know you you go backwards you the the last person that's on the back row goes in first and then they build out the choir you know things like that uh what do they call the risers so the last person off the risers is the first person on so there you go and so he's standing by the door <clears throat> and as he's standing by the door there's a little three-year-old who is looking at him on the back pew, staring at him out the door instead of paying attention to what's going on up in front. And so he's making faces at the little kid and whatever. And the kid's making noises and the mommy gives the little kid a red Tic Tac. Oh, yeah. And so he's got the little red Tic Tac and, and the guy's going, you know, smiling at him, making faces at him. And it acts like he's picking his nose to see if he can get the kid to pick his nose. The kid didn't pick his nose. The kid took the red Tic Tac and shoved it up his nose. <laughs> it the is very painful. Taps, what is this? Those are hot cinnamons. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like yeah. before the cherries came out, they were all hot cinnamons. <laughs> they were hot cinnamons. And the kid How got it up there. And, <laughs> and so the kid sticks it up his nose and all of a sudden it it gets a little stuck. And so he's digging a little further. Uh, and, and the more he's digging, you know what he's doing. He's pushing it up he's further. He's pushing it up you further. Have to blow it out. You can't dig it out. And There's so no all of a sudden the kid's like Eh, 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 eh. and his eyes are starting to water or whatever and the dude in the back is like his nose is burning oh, oh, oh i mean he's horrified he really didn't mean to do that to the kid the kid just did it <laughs> and he's like oh. and and all of a sudden little red streaks started coming out the kid's nose where the hot tic tac started breaking down running down his lip and he's just ah. and the mom turns around and is like ah takes him up by the hand just take him into the bathroom she doesn't have a clue what's going on with the kid but <laughs> she comes right out the door past <laughs> the guy that was standing there he's just like <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah because they were having a hard enough time as it was <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah so anyway that's the funny with the dick tack the tick <laughs> the tic tac 
Okay. All right, um, and that is a great place <laughs> for some good news. Well, you know, it's time for a little good news. And let the sun shine through for me and you with some good news. Today's good news segment is from today to today dot com. <laughs> not I... today, not today. Why can I never not mess that up? I don't know. New Jersey State Trooper pulled over a retired cop for having tinted windows. Turns out they met before, twenty seven years ago. A traffic stop in New Jersey this weekend this week ended with a state trooper offering a handshake and not a ticket. It was thanks to the driver for something that happened 27 years ago. The New Jersey State Trooper Michael Patterson pulled over Matthew Bailey on June 1st for tinted windows. As the two chatted, Bailey said he was a retired police officer from Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm guessing. I'm (laughs) overpronouncing that on purpose. P-I-S-C-A-T-A-W-A-Y. Piscataway. According According to a Facebook post, by the New Jersey State Police. Patterson, 27, mentioned that he grew up in Poe Place in Piscataway. Bailey knew the area. He once... Stop laughing at me. Bailey knew the area. He once helped deliver a baby there when he was a rookie cop. He even remembered the boy's name. Michael. My name is Michael Patterson, sir, the trooper said, extending his hands. (laughs) Thank you for delivering me. His mouth dropped open, and so did mine. Pat, and so did mine. Patterson said at a press conference on Thursday, "I believe that it was a divine encounter, and I met him for a reason." Patterson and Bailey's first meeting had been on October fifth, nineteen ninety one, when Patterson's mother Karen went into labor while on her way home from shopping. When Bailey arrived, a doctor talked him through the birth over the phone, and the state police recalled. After their chance meeting during the traffic stop, Patterson and his mother visited Bailey and his wife at their home and took some pictures with the man who'd helped them all those years ago. It was awesome, Patterson said. You never think a routine stop like that turns into meeting the person who helped give the resources to bring you into this world. We were over there for two hours just catching up, Karen Patterson told the Asbury Park Press. They were so sweet. We're all going to keep in touch. There you go. All right. A couple weeks ago, our good news was about a baby being delivered on the highway. Yes. And I, I forget her name. She was she was a cute little girl. Uh huh. And now we have a full circle. The cop who delivered the baby met the baby who is now twenty seven, who is now a rookie cop. Who stopped him? Who stopped him for, for, for violating a law? Well, at, at tinted windows. He so wasn't supposed to. Yeah, right. So anyway, the uh, but the good news is people reconnecting. Um, have have uh, you get anybody here ever reconnected with somebody you kind of lost for a while, and then uh, to get to see them again was just just really cool. Does it count if it's family? Yes. I mean, reconnecting is reconnecting. Not somebody I was particularly close to, but someone I hadn't seen forever, and it's not really cool, but it's more like weird. Okay, moving right along. <clears throat> um, Emily, I'm surprised she hasn't thought of this, but uh, last year uh, was the serious year that we actually reconnected with our cousins because our both of our lives... <gasps> I got it first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my story. Shut up. <laughs> Cha-ching. Gotcha. Uh, no, uh, it's been, uh, what, I, I think it was a couple of years and we kind of lost touch. And finally last year, we really reconnected and it's it was always us four cousins. And it is now, again, just us four cousins getting together. But instead of we've added on to the group, we've had um, friends from both of our places that are like, sup? Yeah, we're friends now. Cool. And it's <laughs> pretty much. Everybody's so low key. What's up? We're friends now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Um. It 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 was really cool because last summer they got to come up and it was super super fun. We've actually had them on the show last year. We did. Before. Did they say anything while they were on the show? I don't remember. I I honestly don't. But it it was super fun and getting to uh, reconnect with people. Is just an awesome thing to do, especially when they're family and you love them. Yeah, people that you love. That's true. Um, when 
I get. I guess I get to reconnect with one of my friends from um from where I used to go to school. So um, I I used to go to school in Coloma, and then I transferred to Tri County in for my seventh grade, and now through high school. And um, so where I work, she all, that person also worked there, so we got to kind of talk a little bit, and it was pretty cool. That we were just like, hey, I know you from somewhere, and they're like, yeah. We went to school together. I was like, yeah, I know. I was just messing with you. Were <laughs> <laughs> well, you or... see were the awesome finger guns. He was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> that, that roll you got on I'm there. I'm telling you. Hey, we used to be really good friends back in the top of the morning. Now, who now are you? The of the evening. No, yeah, you know, we're on the downhill slide. I, actually, you know what? That did happen once. I mean, not really friends, but like people I knew. Like, I went to camp. In northern Kentucky, where my grandparents were groundskeepers for like nine straight years. And so some of the p- kids that would come back every year, you get to know. Because it's more likely you end up getting put in the same group. And so that happened for about four consecutive years out of those nine. And when I came back for um, teen camp, like it had been forever since I had been back. It had been like between three and four years. And so when I came back for teen camp, I was seeing faces I recognized all over the place. I was like, I know you, and I know you, and I know you, but how do I know you? Like, it was so weird. I saw, I saw, like... How do I know you? Right. I That's saw a loaded all question. Three, I saw all three Savannas, which I had been <laughs> partners with in, like, three different years. I saw Brooke, who had been in my group for two different years. I saw uh, Jeremy, who used to make fun of me every year. I mean, I saw, I saw all sorts of people that I hadn't seen in forever, and I was like... I recognize all you guys. And then I was naming them off by names and they're all like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Emily. They're like, oh, <laughs> you're that girl. And I felt really awkward, like all teen camp long because everybody knew me, but they only remembered bits and pieces about me. I was like, yeesh. Okay. Bits and pieces. Bits so, and pieces and weird bits and pieces too. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. But when you reconnect with people that you really care about, that's, that's cool. So, um, let, let me just say this as we wrap up today's show. Uh, maybe you got a long lost friend that has been on your heart and mind. Um, go out of your way this week and Reconnect with them. Give them a phone call. Send them an email, uh, a text, something of that nature. Um, shoot them some finger guns. Shoot, hey. you know, hey, <laughs> yeah, and uh, do what Kyle does. Hey, <laughs> at least he didn't, you know, do the. <laughs> and um, so uh, do that. You never know how that might make your friends' day. So this wraps up today's show, and we're so glad that you have been with us. This show would not be possible if it weren't for people like you listening in and hopefully laughing Thank along you. with us. To viewers like you. Thank you. So either laughing along with us or laughing at us. Either way, <laughs> we don't care. We're just glad that you tuned in. Share no, this we show. Care. Just don't tell us which. Yeah, share this show <laughs> with somebody, and um, we'll catch you next Tuesday here on the B. Andrews Radio Show. I got you be feeling that. Ah, oh, it's got a great crew going on. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Got me feeling good. Got me feeling really.